The final topic in section 3.1 uh, is the uh, discussion of the general solution for linear 2 by 2 systems. In, three point, in chapter 3, we're going to learn how to solve every possible 2 by 2 uh, linear uh, constant coefficient system. Uh, and this theorem will apply in all those cases to how we find general solutions. And so the statement of the theorem says that suppose we have two solutions of this linear system. If uh, the solutions at time 1 and at time 2 are linearly independent, that means they're not scalar multiples of each other, then for any possible initial condition, so at time 0, if, if we're looking for something that passes through the point x0, y0, we can find constants k1 and k2 so that this linear combination, so I've already demonstrated with the linearity principle that any linear combination of two solutions is a solution. So, so it's guaranteed that this will also solve this system. But the fact that these two are linearly independent at time 0 means that we can also find constants k1 and k2 so that this system at time 0 will pass through the point uh, x0, y0. And so here's how we phrase initial value problems for systems. Next, let's look at an example. So again, the example of the decoupled, partially decoupled system uh, from, from uh, section 2.4 uh, is written here. And as was shown in section 2.4, uh, uh, we have two known solutions. One of the solutions is uh, e to the 2t, 0. And I want to now start, as we will move forward in always using more of a vector notation, I can factor out an e to the 2t from both of these terms and rewrite it this way. And in this form, we can see that the solution y1 is a vector that points in the 1, 0 direction. So it starts at the origin. And so I'm now down on the screen and points in the 1, 0 direction. e to the 2t, as t moves forward, gets larger and larger. So we take the 1, 0 vector. And as time moves forward, we keep moving out towards infinity in this direction. This is what the solution y sub 1 of t looks like. Y sub 2 of t, uh, if you look at section 2.4, you saw that this is a solution. But factoring out a 1 half e to the minus 4t from both terms leaves us with a minus 1 half, uh, 1 half e to the minus 4t here. And it reveals the direction in which we're moving, which is the minus 1, 2 direction, meaning over 1 and up 2. Because e to the minus 4t is getting smaller uh, as t increases, these solutions are approaching the origin, whereas y1 is moving away from the origin. These are our two known solutions. But what's drawn here, um, and this figure is from chapter 3, is the, is the direction field showing all possible uh, solutions to this differential equation. I'll, I will uh, just draw a few so to remind you of what we're, we're talking about here, following these vectors, so I could come in here and then it looks as if you turn and go this way. Those are solutions. There are solutions that come up this way and then approach this asymptotically. Solutions in here seem to be doing something like this. Everywhere in this plane are solutions of this system and what we're going to see in the next slide is an example where I give you one specific initial condition. In fact, I think it's going to be the condition 0, 2. And we're going to decide, well, what is the general solution that passes through that, which is built, of, built from these two straight line solutions, namely this one and this one. As an example, and this picture also comes from your textbook, here is a graph of our solution y1 of t, and here's a graph of our solution y2 of t as it approaches the origin. And just the straight linear combination using coefficients of 1 in front of y1 and y2 
gives us this solution, and uh, and I see, well, and, and we'll see that, um, okay. right, so, so this is what we're going to find on the next page, in fact, uh, because it appears as if this is going through the initial condition uh, 0, 2, okay? And so two straight-line solutions, when added together, can give us a curved solution, and that's what, in fact, happens. Okay, one more page. So here we are <coughs> um, looking at our two solutions. Here's uh, y1 and uh, y2. Uh, I took the liberty of removing the, the one-half in front because any scalar multiple of a solution is also a solution. So having a one-half in front just complicates what things look like. This y2 um, lives on this line over here and approaches the origin, and it's a solution, and this is a solution. And so, <clears throat> and so as the linearity principle states, and as our theorem for the general solution states, that the general solution... solution has the form, so I'll call it y of t, it's going to look like some constant times y1 plus some other constant, which I'm calling k2, times y2. <clears throat> we are assured, we are guaranteed that this is a solution from the linearity principle, but now the question is can we find the the k1 and the k2, so that we go specifically through the point 2, 0. So what we're looking for here is 2, 0. We're looking for the solution that passes through it, and it'll look like this if we were to draw it. Well, it's easy to do because uh, we, we know that, um, that y at time 0 needs to be uh, 0, 2. That's the initial condition. Uh, however, uh, using our general solution, we have a k1, y1 at time 0, if I let t be 0 here, is just the vector 1, 0, so I'm going to write 1, 0, and y2, so if I look at y2 and I let t be 0, that makes it a 0 here. This term is a 1, and I'm at the location minus 1, 2. This is y1 at time 0, and this is y1 at time 0, and y2 at time 0. Well, this leads to an equation, uh, two equations and two unknowns, easy for us to solve. I'm going to write them uh, as follows. That's k1 minus k2 has to be a 0, and um, uh, 0 k1 plus 2 k2 has to be a 2. Well, this implies that k1 equals k2, and this implies that k2 is equal to a 1. So, sure enough, um, our solution, so our solution of the initial value problem, value problem, problem, uh, which I'll refer to up here as star. So the initial solution of the initial value problem star is the vector-valued function y of t made up of a k1, which is a 1, and a k2, which is a 1, k1 times y1, k2 times y2, uh, which is none other than e to the 2t, 0, uh, and e to the minus 4t, um, 2 e to the minus 4t. Here it is written as a sum of two vectors, or in its final form, it's e to the 2t 
plus e to the minus 4t and uh, a 2 e to the minus 4t. And uh, right, I apologize, there should be a minus sign there. Um, is that right? Yes, there should be a, a minus sign there, so let's see if I can erase that. That should be a minus sign. Right. And that's it. Okay, so that's how we're going to use solutions um, to known solutions that are linearly independent at time zero to, uh, to find all possible solutions, to find all the curves that go through um, this phase plane. And that's how we're going to do it. Thank you.